This video shows how to calculate profit and loss using the example of a perfectly competitive industry. We see that it's a perfectly competitive industry because the demand curve is horizontal and that means that it's equal to the market price, P, and it will also be our marginal revenue curve because the firm can sell as much output as it likes at the market price. So the first step in determining profit is always to find out how much output the firm will make. In this case, we want to find where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, which will be right here. In fact, all firms will produce where marginal cost equals marginal revenue in order to maximize their profits. Now just for the sake of this example, let's assume the quantity we're producing is 10 units. So that's the first step. Next, at that quantity, we want to find the price that is being charged. Well, it turns out that the price, we go over here to the price axis, it's just the market price. And let's say for the sake of argument that that's $7 per unit. Now, we need to know how much does it cost the firm in order to make this stuff. So at an output of 10 units, we see that the average total cost is this point right here on the average total cost curve. So if we take that over to the price axis to get its price coordinate, Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that it is costing the firm 5 to produce a unit on average. Well, if it costs only 5 and they can sell it for 7, then they're going to make $2 on each unit that they sell. But their total profit will depend on how many units they're selling, so they're selling 10 units and they're making $20 total because that is $2 is the difference between price and average total cost and we multiply that by 10 units. So this green area here is going to be our profit. Now let's go to an example next where we're making economic losses. The logic is the same. We want to find the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue and so we're going to go to this point right here where those two I'm sorry go to this point right here where those two curves intersect and then we go down we find that the firm will be producing at this quantity Q. They're going to charge the market price P because it's a perfectly competitive firm. All right, so here's P the market price. Now we need to know at that quantity what is the average total cost. So at that quantity let's just go up to the average total cost curve and we can read that over here you can see what is the cost per unit. So it turns out that now it's costing the firm more to produce a unit than it can sell it for. It's losing this much money on each unit. So let's assume again that the market price was seven and now it's costing ten dollars per unit. We're still producing ten units of output. So what that means is that there's a loss of three dollars on each unit sold, we're selling 10 units, so we get this area right here, which is equal to $30, and that is our economic loss. Now let's go to the case of long-run equilibrium. We know that in a perfectly competitive market in long-run equilibrium, firms make zero economic profit. Now let's see what happens. We're going to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, so that's this quantity right here, and that's going to be 10 just like it has been. And now what we notice is that price equals average total cost. We have this three-way intersection right here. And not only that, but we know that marginal cost intersects average total cost at its minimum. So we're producing at the minimum of average total cost, and the price that we can sell it for equals the average total cost. So it costs us seven to make a unit. We can sell it for seven. We're making zero economic profit. And that is the long run equilibrium.